Hello and welcome back to the script case video. My name is Jamie Hertz and I'm your host today. Uh, today's topic has been the ticketing system created by Sergio over in our Spanish department. He has created an, a new template which you can download. And basically what I've gone ahead and done is downloaded the template, imported it into my local script case, imported the database and applied uh, a multi-language system to the project as well as some other changes which we have seen over the last videos. So we're going to continue from where we had left off and that was here within the control application which is um, which is designed for the PayPal payment. Okay so we are now literally continuing from where we had left off and we were viewing here the control application the events and the onload event okay so here we can see within here that we have the paypal settings we have the paypal return now we could go ahead and change or update some of these commentaries within deep l as we have done with the other languages so i paste that in here so on one if i copy and paste that into deep l we can then just see what the comments are that sergio has added and then we can actually have that in English now as I mentioned I have actually updated this so for some reason you see here now Portuguese it, this is actually Spanish okay and and there we go so when we correct the language it will give us the correct language on this side and then we can actually apply that within our application so I move that there removing right comma for update so I have done that throughout the project so you should be able to have all the correct comments here for you Okay, so to go through this code that Sergio has added here for the PayPal payment, on load of this application after being sent from the previous grid, which was here the reservas client PayPal. Okay, so if you remember from here, we had the grid application where we can make our selections, and then we just click here the PayPal pay with PayPal, and that then loads here the PayPal payment. Okay, so here we are then first of all applying all of our variables, the payment information, how much it costs, whether it's cancelled, and if, if PayPal aborts, then we apply our own uh, error messages. Again, we can change these for the language keys that we apply within the language database. So again, we can just come here to application language, and again, we can create here a new folder, and we can say call this one here app errors, or messages even so that we have it nicely divided and organized and then we can call this one here let's double check what it was so it's cancelled and cancelled and then I think that's right cancelado or something cancelled and yeah, see, I can't spell cancelled correctly. And then for German, um, I really don't remember off the top of my head. So let's just check here in the translation. Okay, so we're cancelled from German, English, into German. Uh, abgebrochen. There we go. And then we just paste that in here again. And we have now our language variable update which we can then apply here within our application as then the error message. Okay, so if I come here, I'll apply then my and like so. Of course, I will need to remove these. Okay, and there, there we go. We have then now our language key applied to the error message here within the application. Okay, so next up we are then here updating the table for the reservations. Okay, so it's actually saying here, is cancelado so again ideally within the projects we just change cancelado for an icon so that's understood for all and that will simplify that one we then have an else if so if that returns back and everything's okay so here we have the error messages if there's an issue and then if we take payment now here we then need to make our changes so we have here first of all our username okay and we have our password our signature as well as then the paypal type now the PayPal type should be standard, okay? Unless you need to make changes here because you have here the array, which you can then make the changes to the method here. If you're not using the express checkout, for instance, then you may need to adjust that. Otherwise you have here the username password signature, which you need to change for your own PayPal details. 
Now, once you've done that, then the payments for this would then basically end up in your account. Okay, so the other application I had opened here was then the blank application. Okay, so the blank application here opens up just MPayPal, uh, which is then here a method. So if I come here, programming, and we can see here MPayPal method, and we are passing here the variables, the reservation, uh, the reservation ID, and then the total value. Okay, so if I come back here to the MPayPal, we have then here also the PayPal settings which we can change and then we can use this as an option. So now if you follow through the training that Sergio had created, even in silent, you will see that uh, he had added this as an option. So it is there and you can actually play with it and copy the code. Okay, so if I then go ahead and close these applications, we won't be needing them no more. And then within the other application, we still want to check out the QR code which he had added. So we have here then in clients, so I'll come here back to tickets, sorry. And we have here conf confirmation client details. So if I run this one, and then I'm, I need a confirmation ID, I'm just gonna add one. And then we have then here the ID. Now do notice that of course, with the 100% that we had added to the previous video, that it doesn't really look so great on this one. So you may want to actually change this application back to the standard. Uh, say say 60% or 600 pixels or whatever you know feels good for you so I say save it to 600 pixels run it again and then I can now have the QR code looking a little nicer for the application now for this one I would even make the change instead of coming for settings previously we had applied the vertical alignment to top here I would possibly set, set it to center and then run again and then the entire container or box will now be displayed within the center of the browser. Okay. Now the QR code is then generated within script case. So let's have a quick look at that. We can then come here to the events and fields. Okay. So within fields, we can see here that we have a QR code field. Now it is a standard data type. So all we need to do really is just select QR code as an option within the data type for our field type. Okay. Once you've done that, you will be presented here with these values format. Now here we can select the level of error correction. Okay, so I, typically you select 7%, but you could set it higher if you really wanted to. And uh, we can also set here the image size, which is then the image here of the QR code. Okay, so we can change that here. We can make it much larger, much smaller, and we can also apply margins. So we apply a margin there and make the image larger and run the application again. I'll add one for the client ID or confirmation ID. And there we have a really big QR code that nobody can miss with a phone. Okay, so of course we can make it smaller. And yeah, let's just remove the margin. And we have then a nice small QR code or however you please. It's quite simple to uh, achieve and apply within your project by simply making a few adjustments here. Now, notice within the events that we had opened, we have also an on record. Now this is where we then specify the data that is then provided by the application. So we have here, first of all, QR equals. So QR here in this case is the field, okay? So we have QR, which is then the field variable, equals, first of all, the station information, the client name, bus. So we may want to change here the information to um, app with the application language again and apply here our own application language keys. Okay, so we just again need to change here the values. Okay, and then we have then also the client, the client name bus, the license plate, the time when they exited, the destination where they are going, the type of ticket, the value of the ticket, as well as then the confirmation. Okay, so that is then all included within this QR code. So if you scan that with your phone now, you will actually see that it presents the information of this purchase. Okay, so we have here this client number, the client uh, document, the destination, and the quantity of tickets. Okay, so that's how the QR code is then applied within your project. And other than that, it is quite simple to achieve. Now, if we have a look at here, the admin applications, we will see that we also have those uh, similar applications here. So I'm going to go ahead and open all of them. And we have here, first of all, the confirmation. 
the confirmation admin, the admin details, and then also the reservation view, okay? So now within home, do you remember that before the description, I've translated all of these, you have this in English, so it explains, and do notice again the one, two step, okay? So the form confirmation is usually the first real actual step, and then you come after the confirmation, you generate the QR code, and then you can also view the reservations. Okay, so if I come, come here and run the form confirmations, and then we can check out the form that Sergio has put together here. And the only slight change I would make here is maybe here for the values. So let's just quickly change that here in fields, Pago Confirmado. Again, change the C now to our language key. So if we can actually change that here, we can go lang. Um, and it was, sorry, lang underscore select. And this one was no, update that. And then for the C, again, lang select yes, and update that also. Now I would possibly change this to two columns also, and then run our form again. And we can now see the C and no, or yes and no, as it will be next to each other now also. Okay, so it's a little tidy and cleaner now. We can make various other changes if we wanted to. But I think that's okay for the time being. Okay, so with this form, if we go ahead and say yes, this is we have then a reservation ID, and we say I'll say 22, um, conf confirmed, the payment's confirmed, yes, and so on. So if I go add a new one, I can then add a new reservation, decline information, and so forth. Okay, so obviously this is an application then within the backend, and we can then just specify with ourselves whether the payment has been confirmed or not. Okay, just by manually doing that here if we wanted to. Okay, so if I run then here the confirmation grid, admin grid, we have here then all of the transactions. Now you'll notice also for the groups, we would then typically need to change those for the languages also. Okay, so to do that, within the grid application, if you come down here and view then the group by, and then expand your options. So here if we have a dynamic group by, we have then the fields, and then here I can then adjust the individual field. And here, for instance, I can then change again for a language variable. And that will then be applied within my application here. Okay. So right now, of course, this is Google Translate translating this. These are not actually there. And in the majority of cases, I have it switched off. Okay. So do notice that this grid is also automatically updating. Okay. So to achieve that, we come back here into the grid application and settings. We have here then a page interval where we can then select the page refresh interval in seconds. So I can select here five seconds and the page will automatically refresh every five seconds. Okay, so within this grid, we can also see all of the information regarding the route as well as the um, um, requests by the users for their travel and destination. Okay, so if I come here for the confirmations client, Details admin, and I'm going to add one in here again. We will now see that we have the QR code. Now that is taken from the other grid. It's just a case of selecting the application or the, the value. So if I come back here to this grid again, and it applies also for the other one, which we had seen previously, I select there the, the link and I open up the QR code and I can view the information. And do note, as I mentioned before, that these applications are similar to the ones here within the client tickets section, so that then basically what you see here is similar to what you have there also, the functionality and how you update then also the QR code. So if I come back here, stay on, if I stay on this application for instance, and if I come here to application links, we can see here that this application comes to here the client detail admin, okay? So that's where this one goes to. And then if I come here to events and on record, we have here then the QR formatting, okay? So as we did for the client application, we had seen a few moments ago. Okay, so for the grid reservations, we have using the view table again, and here the only extra thing that uh, Pe uh, Sergio has applied here is the state of the PayPal. So here we have then the color of the field. And of course, as mentioned previously, we can go ahead and change here the on record, for instance, so that instead of having the text displayed, 
we can create a new field, have an icon displayed instead. And we can, of course, change here the color of the field, which here we have then the field, a style or PayPal, which is the last field here. So we're setting here the SC field style using one of our macros. And all the macros are available here on the right hand side within your insert code option panel here okay so you can always check here out check out exactly what some of these mean if you're not sure anything starting with sc underscore you will more than likely find it here within the macros or elsewhere within our documentation okay so if i close up now and what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump over to the completed project and we can quickly just go over the everything else as we have it here one last time so you see within the project that you will be downloading. This is it complete with all everything translated and configured accordingly. The main sections you will want to change are those I've shown you. So if I come back here to buses, for instance, or countries, you see I've made some typical changes. I'll come here to the buses. I have added here a different icon. So you can actually add that yourself. I also added font awesome icons into the header. And to apply that, if I come back here into the application, so say for instance here, buses, we have here the grid TB buses, and here within the layout, header and footer, we have the language variable, which I have applied. And then within the application language is where I have actually applied the font awesome icon. So I come here to custom titles, you'll see here is the font awesome icon added within the language variable. Now this does provide us quite a few advantages over the fact that this actual field has a character limitation and here it is pretty much double that. So we can actually add the font awesome icon here without any issues and even increase the size of our title without um, hitting those limitations. I do notice also that I do have everything fully translated, Spanish, English, and German. So everything is ready there for you. And you can then just go ahead and make some of the other changes that are still there required. As we'll see here for journeys and country, we still have to deal with the tables, how you would want to deal with those for the languages, maybe add icons to the other, other grids and tables, or just simply remove them from here, the buses and bus brands, which are the only two applications which have then the font awesome icons. Okay, so we have then also the reservations we had seen a few moments ago, as well as then the new confirmations and so forth. Okay, so you see in some applications, I hadn't gone ahead and made all, all the changes. But of course, the language keys are all there so that you understand fully what you are viewing and doing. And then you just have to make those final changes yourself to use the platform. So it's up to you entirely if you use it only in English, or with the multiple languages. Now with this project, if I wanted to now remove all of the languages, I would simply need to come here to project and come back here to properties and then come here to locals and I can remove the languages that I do not want to use. Okay. And then save it. And that will then remove them here from the <coughs> application languages. And then when I view here, the individual keys, I will then have only the individual language that you have left and I'm still left with the opportunity of adding multiple languages anytime in the future, plus the benefit of having having an extra uh, extra characters within my labels and fields. Okay, so that's it. That's all for today, I'm afraid. So I hope you have enjoyed today's script case video. If you have any questions do post them in the comments or send us a mail. Um, and you can always reach out to us at script case and contact support and they are always available to help you. Okay, so I hope it's useful for you as well as thank you very much to Sergio for creating the initial template, which has been really great. And I'm sure you will all enjoy it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you will have a great time uh, with the project and the training and hope to see you again next time.